This is all about giving you the best information um, and the most accurate information and really the most candid information, right? For people who live there, this is not something that you're, this is like sitting with your girlfriends or your guy friends and really getting the scoop on what it's like to live in Puerto Vallarta, what it's like to move there. Um, so we want this to be as useful as possible for you. And we will have a formal Q and A at the end. So we're just going to start off with who we are. So you can get a little bit of context of who we are, what we're doing here and why we are the people to give you the dish on all things PV. So Daniel, you want to give a little intro? Sure, Lisa. Um, well, my name is Daniel Champsian. I moved to Vallarta from Los Angeles um, in 2003. I went into real estate in 2006 with Timothy Real Estate Group. So I've been in the business here for 16 years. And uh, during this great run, I've made a lot of friends along the way. And I've seen the city grow leaps and bounds. So this is really exciting that we're all here today to share some information about the cost of living um, and how wonderful life can be in Mexico. Yeah, so so Daniel has Daniel's been around. Uh, <laughs> how long were you? He's been around for a while. How long were you to say that, Risa? He's done a lot of transactions. <laughs> <laughs> and Randy Bennett and Craig Strong, um, they retired to PV back in 2017. So tell me, so why PV, guys? We've always loved it here. Uh, Randy was a, was a teacher and he always had spring break and we came here with our son during spring break for, I don't know, 12 years. Yeah. And then had the biggest impulse buy of our life through Daniel. He showed us one condo. We bought it. <laughs> Literally. That's exactly what happened. Literally. It's exactly. Literally in one morning. I mean, it was crazy, but it was a great decision. So yeah, we moved sure here you... from Santa Fe, New Mexico um, in 2017 with our son. And I, I actually drove our car down with uh, Xander, our son, and, and our two dogs uh, all the way from Santa Fe. And that was an adventure. Um, but we're here have to tell and i think that you you do have when we get to it you'll have some advice on that for anybody who's looking yeah. to drive down yeah um absolutely. with their stuff especially yeah. for people who are looking to move down for the first time mm -hmm. things that you should and definitely should not bring with you um when moving to mexico um how old was your son at the time darren's asking he was 17. Yeah, and so he finished up high school. He did Indiana. 11th and 12th grades here. here at the American School of Puerto Vallarta. Uh, and then finally, this is me, um, actually in PV in 2020. Um, so I also direct episodes of House Hunters International, and that's how I know Daniel. So many of you may recognize him because he's been on a gazillion episodes at this point. <laughs> um, he has become Mr. PV, but he really does is so knowledgeable about Puerto Vallarta. So um, always have a fun time doing there, um, being there and directing episodes. Um, and because I was traveling so much with House Hunters International, that actually is what inspired the YouTube channel. And so we've created a bunch of videos on moving to Mexico um through the modern aging youtube channel and then now because those videos have done so well we've actually split it off and now have a separate youtube channel called dream retirement international um so that will focus mainly all on um retiring abroad types of types of videos but if you haven't seen any of these you can go to modern aging just search modern aging and you can search any of these keywords and and the um if you just pop in mexico modern aging mexico they'll pop up as well so just want to welcome you to Puerto Vallarta. This photo was taken from my hotel room and this is not even like, there's no Photoshopping on this photo. This is how beautiful the sky can look and the ocean the bay can look um, and during the morning times um, in PV. So those of you who are not familiar with um, where PV is located, some people call it PV, some people call it Vallarta, Puerto Vallarta has many names. It's right here on the West coast of Mexico um in the Banderas Bay so you actually have um 
the Sierra Madre Mountains, uh, and then you have the bay, and you have like literally you can see the whales in the winter time. It's it's pretty insane. Um, would you not agree? It's the reason we're here. Uh, the Bay of Banderas is a miracle. It's a marine preserve for uh, marine mammals, and the wildlife is incredible. And so is the night. It's amazing, Risa. Sometimes, well, not at our house. <laughs> no, not at our house. <laughs> it's really cool. Sometimes you're walking on the Malecon, uh, especially during the winter. And all of a sudden, you have you have these whales breaching right in front of you. You've got these dolphins going by, and they're pretty close to to the boardwalk. So people just kind of sit there and enjoy the show. It's pretty insane. And there are some great um, uh, tours, whale watching tours, um, that will take you out in the bay, and you can see the whales and their babies, and it's an amazing it's a thing. Great experience. To do. That's usually mm, January, February, March, kind of. December through March. Yeah. December through March, yeah. Through March, right. Um, so here are some of the more popular neighborhoods where expats tend to live in PV. Um, so this is, so to the north, you'll have the airport. And then you come into like Fluvial or Versailles, um, which is right next to each other, the hotel zone, uh, a neighborhood called the 5th of December which is a little bit hillier, kind of into the hills a little bit. The most popular but by far is the romantic zone. That's kind of centro, that's the central district um, of PV. And then a little bit south of that, you have Amapas and Conchas Chinas, which is again, also in the hills. And that's where, actually all three of you lived in Conchas Chinas yeah. mm -hmm. for a while. Um, so you can talk a little bit um, about that when, when we come to that section. So for those of you who have never been to BV or those of you who have, you rec probably recognize this skyline. Um, this is the Bay of Banderas, of course, and this is PV with your beautiful terracotta roofs. This is right in Centro. You'll see these kinds of, you know, the cobblestone streets is what it's famous for, I think. Um, you, it's the only con colonial port town in Mexico, yes, is that right? It's the only uh, colonial <clears throat> um, resort beach town in the entire country. So it's, it's quite special. Yeah. So it has yeah. a lot of its charm. This is the famous Malecon. Um, for those of you who have been, this goes, it's quite a bit. I mean, it's at least a couple of miles long, I would say, yeah? Mm-hmm. It starts in Cinco de December. It ends at the very bottom of Los Muertos Beach. Right, right, right. Of course, it's all lined with stores and restaurants and, and the like. And this is Los Muertos Beach that um, Craig was just referring referring to. Um, this is the famous, so that's the famous sail. Is that what, is that what it's pier? called? Yeah. Yeah. So you can walk out there. Uh, which is really pretty. There's, you know, some really popular restaurants right there, like La, La Palapa, which if you go, you have to get the coconut shrimp. <laughs> yes, <it is. laughs> it's like, and, and their desserts yeah. are like to die for. And by the um, way, by the way, Risa, that yeah. pier so, is um, around 11 years old. So the old pier just wasn't cutting it anymore because Vallarta had grown. So they, that it took about, God, I would say about a year or so for that new period to go up because of the federal funding. Wow. And it lights That's up really at pretty. night. Yeah, it's beautiful. So we're going to, so Craig and Randy actually just moved, or not just, but was it this year or last year? December. This year, December. Oh, okay, so not even a year yet. Um, from their condo in Conchas Chinas. So tell us a little bit about your new place. Why? And so you went from purchasing, you sold your condo and now you're renting. So what was that process like for you guys? We made a decision that we needed to uh, live on one level. We were having knee surgeries and uh, the, the, and you had to do, and you lived in a duplex. We lived, well, we, yeah, we lived up with a lot of stairs. There were, it was to, to our car where we parked, it was 75 stairs. There was an elevator, 
Um, it didn't always work, but <laughs> if you're lucky, it did. Um, but there were, it was 25 stairs just to our bedroom and back within our condo. It was two story. It was beautiful. We had a spectacular view of the entire Bay of Bandera, Banderas. Um, and it was an older building, uh, very well maintained. And we had a, we loved it there. We loved it. It was, we thought it was our dream house. And now where we are, we think it's our dream house. <laughs> because we finally um, moved to the beach. So now we live- So you on, have ocean views. We live on the beach. It's a spectacular ocean view across the bay and- um, A big pool, huge, beautiful pool. Big swimming pool and a, a glorious older building. The, the apartments are all quite large. Um, and you can probably tell from these pictures, the rooms are big. Um, it's very comfortable and you're, you're on the ocean. I mean, you just can't get over the sound and the smells and watching the birds. We live next to a bird sanctuary. So the showing of the birds is just an amazing part of nature to have where we are. And that uh, yellow crowned heron that you see in the lower left side, They've set up a nest in there. They've kind of moved into the palm tree next to our building. So awesome. it is awesome. So people want to know, so what part of town do you live in? And what made you decide to rent this time versus buy again? Well, we live, we live pretty far south of town. We live uh, just south of uh, an area called Garza Blanca, uh, which is a um, nature preserve. And we're just north of a little village called Mismaloya. So it is, I mean, a, a lot of people think we've moved way too far away, but that was kind of purposeful on our part. As Vallarta has grown, um, we decided we wanted to kind of get away from it. We've lived in Los Angeles and New York and in lots of big cities. And um, we, we really wanted to be at the beach. Yeah. And we, what we did is, we, is our property value had had really gone up a, a fully a third. And Tangle turned to us and said, "This is a good time to sell if you're going to sell." So what we did is we took that money, invested it, and it's paying for us to live now. So you didn't want to purchase again? No, not right now. I mean, prices are pretty high right now, and. But not we, compared to the United States. No, no, gosh, no. So Tanya wanna, will tell you about that yeah, in a bit. Yeah. But but All right. So we, now you have your investment. So what do you pay in rent? Two thousand US a month. For a three bedroom, two, two bath. Um probably two thousand square foot. That's a, that's all right. Tanyal, it's a big place. Think, well, yeah. Uh huh. With with um, beachfront um, views, I mean, like literally. It, it is. We're. I mean, the, we're we're right there on the beach. We have a big terrazza, um, and it's a beautiful beach. On the front side of our building is the jungle, which is gorgeous right now because of all the rain we've had, and then uh, on the other side is the ocean. So, and the beach itself is rocky, pristine, beautiful. And uh, you can see into the water. And the and our, so see in, clean. In the na our our neighbor built a swimming beach, so it's you can go right in. I mean, it's very calm, and you can go in and swim. Wow, and so I I would agree though that as you move away from you know the romantic zone from Centro, the prices will tend to get go down. Is that right? Yeah, the further further you are away from town, um, you you'll find, you know, more suitable prices. It's all about location, location, right? So the romantic zone and the surrounding yeah. areas, those are like the prime areas and, and beachfront is prime, but you tend to find more affordable homes when you go uh, further south where it's less developed. We're, we're 50, a 15 minute drive, unless there's tons of traffic, which there rarely yeah. is tons of traffic. We're 15 minutes yeah. from town. So, you know, after living in LA, and driving on the freeways, yeah. it's it seems like nothing. And you're the whole drive. You're driving along the yeah. beach fronts. So I mean, I've been Beautiful. I've been to that place numerous right. times, and I live on the border of the romantic zone now. 
And I tend to get there, like Randy said, if there's a bit of traffic, I'm there in 15 minutes, but sometimes I'm there, you know, just under 15. And driving along that coast, I mean, a, a couple of points, mm -hmm. you're just seeing the, the ocean and it's just so fantastic. And if you're driving like right at sunset, I mean, it's just magical. Yeah, that it's pretty sick, actually, the sunsets in PV, I have to say. Um, so, Randy and Craig, you do live there during the summer months, correct? You yeah. live all year round? Year round. And we always have. When we moved here in 2017, we really moved here. We didn't go back and forth. We had done that on vacations for years. And, you know, we just felt like um, the time was right. And then Daniel butted in and showed us a dream house <laughs> that we had to have. <laughs> and, um, and our son was going into the 11th grade. He wasn't that happy at his school. And we thought an international school education might be a great way to end his high school years. And I think it was. Um, and so we're here full time. We, we just did it. Right. Um, and you have a car. Both of you have a car. And I would say car. it's we not have... essential, but it's very handy. Um, but you do have to know where to park in PV. You kind of like need to know how to park even um, yeah. with the white lines, what's, you know, what you can, where you can park, where you can't park, that sort of thing. Well, and there's structures too, parking structures. structures. But I would not recommend bringing your car down here if you're just vacationing. Right. It, it, it's it, it's just too crazy to drive here and to find your way around. Well, first of all, when we moved here, when we were first coming, I mean, when we were first coming here, we we nearly always spent at least one of the two weeks uh, in the romantic zone on on Los Muertos, um, and we didn't we thought the romantic zone was Puerto Vallarta. We didn't know there was any more. Well, we knew Centro for years, we, we went to the Centro. Um, but. Uh, we just, I mean, it, driving was out of the question. Well, we were tourists. We were also drinking all the time. You know, it's party time <laughs> here. And so uh, we were very happy to not be driving. Now, however, um, we're very grateful to have our car, which is we, we bought down here and uh, it's insured here and registered here. Um, but you have to, you have to learn how to drive here. For sure. And we sent our yeah. own. Well, our there's Uber, Uber, too. Yeah. There's Uber and there's taxis. Right. And there's buses. Yep. And there's oh, buses. lots of buses. Yeah. The buses um, are what? I think they're 10 pesos yeah, now like to ride a bus. Cents. That's nothing. Yeah. And you both are. Okay. So, so they do have doctors and hospitals um, nearby. We'll talk a little bit about that um, coming up. And uh, you both are both permanent residents, correct? Yes. I'm getting my permanent residency card in about a month. Oh, nice. And yeah. so actually that's a good tip in terms of purchasing a car. What's the thing about purchasing a car? You need to be, if you're a permanent resident, you cannot bring a foreign plated car into that's Mexico. Correct. Is that right? No, or is it if, you're, if you're a permanent resident, you can't drive a foreign license plate vehicle. It Mexican has to be Mexico. Place, yes. Don't you have a certain um, amount then, of time to do do, do that? Um, good question. I, I rewrite. I'm guessing. I don't yeah. know. I mean, I've I've been a permanent resident for such a long time, and I too drove um, the, like an extra car we had in the family back in 2006. Um, but I was not a permanent resident at that time, so um, I sold the car and I bought um, actually. My first car that I bought in Mexico was my Jeep, and I sold that, and I got a different car. But you don't have to be a full-time resident to buy a car. Well, you can be a temporary, temporary resident and buy a car here, yeah. We yeah. were. We were still temporary yeah. residents when we bought our yeah, I, was, I was still a temporary yeah. resident when I bought my Jeep. Yeah. And our, our car we drove down was repatriated and was with our son. And uh, oh. our son moved back to Santa Fe. Interesting. Um, so about how much, okay, because I know we're kind of getting stuck here. Um, we can talk about 
Craig and Randy's condo for the rest of the time, I think. Um, <laughs> but if you were to buy, Tanya, what would you say? If you were to purchase this this property, their condo, how much do you think it would go for? Mm, between five and 600. Yeah, it's a three bedroom. Wow. That's why we're renting. Yeah. <laughs> and the person right. we're renting it, it is... from has had it for like 25 years, so. Well, yeah, they're not getting rid of that anytime soon. Um, in terms of residency, um, residency, yes, you can maintain your U.S. citizenship. And I'm sorry, that would be my dogs. Um, oh, is it difficult it to obtain residency? It's, you guys can talk a little bit more about that in terms of the pros and cons of trying to obtain residency in Mexico. I'm sorry, what was the question? Well, if you're going to live here, you really need to. But Daniel, well, if you're going to be staying, how much of a headache is it to obtain it's not your a residency? At all. Um, there are a set of requirements that you have to fulfill. Uh, there's a and there's a difference between the temporary and permanent. Um, I don't have that list in front of me right now, but I can share that list if anybody wants it. They can email Risa. Um, but it's really easy when you're first trying to get your residency. You have to go to the Mexican consulate, um, whether you live in the states or Canada, and then they'll give you the temporary visa. For your residency and then when you enter mexico i think you have 60 or 90 days if i recall i think it's 60 once you receive that visa to continue with the process so you have to go to mexico and then go to immigration uh, i suggest hiring an immigration specialist or an attorney to help you finish that process in mexico so once you continue oh, with the process here um, it'll take roughly right now maybe around five or six weeks until you get your residency card so if you have a temporary residency card just make sure you know, you renew it before it expires, but once you receive your permanent residency, there's there are no more renewals. That's it. And uh, the the Facebook page, everything you wanted to know about Puerto Vallarta, and we're afraid to ask. And we're afraid to ask. It's not called that. Everything oh. you wanted to know about Puerto Vallarta uh, is a really good resource. And my understanding is that the residency is changing. They're changing those. They rules. always change. There's always a modification, like in the tax laws. And also, depending on which cons, uh, Mexican con, uh, consulate you go to, they might have a slight difference in the requirements. So don't assume that, you know, you go to, like in Los Angeles, I, I went to the consulate in Los Angeles, don't assume that the, the, the information that the consulate in Los Angeles needs is going to apply in Chicago, because it might not. So it's really important to check the consulate for that particular city. And I suggest you take multiple copies of documents, because um, sometimes they don't have a copy machine there. So maybe take two or three copies of your passport, driver's license, utility bills, whatever it is. Sometimes they don't mention that. And if you're receiving Social Security, you will, add, if you're a temporary resident or permanent residency, they will require you to, to um, register that you're living in Mexico. Right. Um, I'm going to put this in the chat. This is a YouTube video that I did. I interviewed a woman by the name of Gabrielle Smith. She talks, she's an immigration expert. And so we talked all things um, residency, permanent and um, temporary. So you can take a look at that. All right. So we're going to move forward. Um, so this is a Mapas. Uh, Taniel, these are Taniel's fabulous <laughs> photos. <laughs> So what are, so maybe you can go into a little bit about these properties um, or this property that you're highlighting here. Uh, whereabouts is it and uh, how big is it? Can you give us the details on sure. how much it costs? So um, Amapas goes from the beach up to the mountainside. So part of Los Muertos Beach is actually in the Amapas neighborhood. And that would be the southern end of Los Muertos Beach. So what you're looking at over here, that actually is uh, the beach over there. That actually is not part of Amapas, that's Los Muertos Beach. And the uh, two photographs there is for a condo that I sold uh, last year called Brisa Lunar. It's a two bedroom, two bath. We sold that and that's the view from the balcony right there. So I sold that uh, condo furnished last year for 379,500. So it's a pretty good value. The prices have gone up since then. I would say that property now is easily over, over 400,000. Um, and the property tax Risa, for that condo are you already shaking your head? You want, you want to take a guess? No. Right. no. <laughs> because I know how insane it is. Like $2. Well, there's a two. Uh, the annual property tax for that condo is $285. So that's for the year. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 
that's that's yeah. Mexico. So property taxes are very, very low. Very low. Um, so right in neighboring Conchas Chinas, this is another condo that you purchased. Yeah, so I sold that condo earlier this year. That's in the Costa de Oro building. It's one of my favorite condominium buildings in Upper Conchas Chinas. So Upper Conchas Chinas, uh, just like Amapas, Conchas Chinas has a has a hill, the hillside mountainous region, and then it goes down to the beach as well. So this is an Upper Conchas Chinas where Randy Craig and I used to live in that neighborhood. Um, and this condo is on the first floor of the uh, of the building, and it's a two bedroom, two bath, sold furnished. Everything you see there was included, and we sold that for four hundred seventy five thousand dollars this year. And the property tax for this condo is only one hundred thirty dollars for the year. <laughs> one hundred thirty bucks. I know. <laughs> I know. It's got a great, it's a massive. Pool. You pay that in one installment, what was that? or yeah. Um, you pay that in one installment or 10? Like well, at least um, so the property tax here in Jalisco um, and other states have them too. I mean, you, if you pay for the whole year uh, in the month of January, you get a 15% discount. And if you pay in February for the whole year, you get a 10% discount. And then in March, you get 5%. So, I mean, if as if $130 wasn't insulting enough, you, you do have additional discounts on top of that. I know. I know. Um, um, so if I could just asking... interject something here, Risa, uh, our reaction to that figure that Daniel just said for the property taxes, that what? That's what it's like living here. This is a show about um, the cost of living here. And all the time we're going, is that all? <laughs> because it really is so inexpensive to live here we couldn't live like we live in the u.s anymore no we couldn't live in the u.s like we live no, here and there is inflation here like it is in the, sure. rest of the rest of the world frankly but uh even with that i mean it's much cheaper so i feel like you know real estate has become comparable uh you know not you know we're not talking comp comparing it to la new york real estate but middle america would say um, but I, I feel like once you live there, and we are going to get into that in terms of some of your day-to-day -day costs and how that compares to um, living in North America, living in the U.S. and Canada and other parts of the world. Um, but before we get into that, people are asking about HOA. So can you briefly, I don't know if you know the HOA costs on any of these units, um, the one in Amapas and Conchas Chinas, uh, Off Daniel? the top of my head, I don't. Uh, but you know the HOA really depends on a lot of factors. For example, does the building have an elevator? Is it one elevator or ten? For example, Molino de Agua, which is a luxury beachfront um, development that we are presented, uh, has ten elevators. It has a huge, massive pool. I don't know how many like security guards they have that rotate. So all that stuff adds up to your HOA dues. The age of the building. If it's on the beach, is that hurricane insurance? So there's, I mean, where I live now, um, I live in a thousand square foot condo. We don't have any bells and whistles in terms of amenities. It's just, we have an elevator. And my HOA dues, I think it's just under $200 a month. I've got, I have city views, I have partial water views, and I'm right on the border of the romantic zone. Right. Right. So you can pay, but you can, if you have like one of these really luxury, if you're in one of these really luxury buildings, Will it go upwards of, you know, 500, 600 Well, for example, Molina de Agua, those units are 3,000 square feet. And the way the HOA dues are charged is typically they, the, the administrator finds out what's the budget, what's the cost to maintain the building on a, monthly, on a monthly basis per se. And then how many units are in there and the square meters, right, of all the units. So they do an average of how much it's going to cost per square meter. And depending on how many square meters your condo is, you pay that proportion. Um, of the overall payment. So Molina de Agua, I think, I think right now they're around $800 a month. If you, if you, you know, convert it using a 20 peso exchange rate. Again, my place, it's just under $200 a month. The building yeah, Molina de Agua though is very fancy. Sorry, go ahead, Craig. But the building we lived in, in Conscious Chinas was beyond charming and old. Mm -hmm. And most of the HOA dues went to maintain mm -hmm. the building. Plus, you're not paying for water That's or included. gas. Yeah. And, 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 and our building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And we had a, in our uh, Conscious Genus condo, we had a, a private swimming pool um, that was just for us. It was so great. Um, I miss that. I but um, uh, the, the property sent someone to care for the pool. It was cleaned and taken care of three times a week. And that was included in our HOA dues. So That's the HOA covers a lot of things you're really glad to have covered here. Plus it was an old building and needed repair. Yeah. So, so Risa, the, the, I just looked it up. The Amapas condo, if you go one slide back. Mm -hmm. So that condo, uh, the HOA dues and dollars was around $425 a month. And that included gas and water. And how, how big is this, um, the, this property, this building? How many well, the units? square feet of that condo is 1,800 square feet. There are only eight units in the building. The penthouse in this building is just massive. I mean, it's, it's like a house. Yeah. Oh, so, it's a but small it's a building. small building. Yeah. That's great. Just, just uh, one condo per floor. Um, so Stanley's asking if this is a good time to buy. Do you see the market leveling off anytime well, soon? Well, right now we're low on inventory because the market's been so good. But there are a lot of new projects that have started. And they're just really great. And they're, they're in the different parts of the town. Like, we can talk about this in a, in a little while. You know, there are other areas that are growing and booming. Uh, and you're finding more affordable housing over there. So, you know, when people ask me... Uh, here, I can go to that. This is, so you're this talking is about Valarte, Valarte, yeah. for example. This is a brand new project uh, that's in Fluvial. Uh, it's one square block. Uh, there are 95 units there. there there's going to be commercial on the ground floor. Um, they're between one and, and two plus den units. Um, the lowest price two bedroom right now with a discount is going for around like just under 290000 And Fluvial and, and, and Versailles, you know, they're, they're neighboring uh, neighbors. There are a lot of new restaurants, cafes, and retail stores, banks, medical facilities that have that have been open. It's kind of like the new romantic zone, I guess you can say. It's very up and coming, and there are some great opportunities over there. But if you look at places like um, Conchas Chinas and Amapas and Romantic Zone, which are all part of what we call Central South, Downtown South, we have very, very low inventory right now. Uh, but to answer your question, is it a good time to buy? The way I look at this, if if you're in a place in life you're ready to move on and you're ready to make something happen for me that's that's a good time for me to make the move whether i'm going to rent or or buy i was ready to leave la i mean i was just kind of like okay i'm not enjoying it here anymore it's time to move on and for me it was the right time and you know can the market crash yeah i mean once we get off this uh presentation you know the market can tumble or it can go on for another year we just don't know but you know you have to live your life that's the way i look at it and if you're just going to hold off, you know, until you're going to try to time the market, so be it. That's your choice. But, you know, I feel like when I'm ready, I'm ready. Right. Um, right. I think, Cindy, that answers your question. It's, it is really hard. And it does. But the Mexican market does uh, this real mm -hmm. estate market. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, does tend to follow the U.S. market? Um, Cabo does. I think Cabo really relies heavily on California. But, you know, Vallarta, we're not, we're not really dependent on the U.S. I mean, the large majority of our foreign buyers are Americans, followed by Canadians. But in recent years, we've been getting a lot of Mexican nationals uh, investing here as well, buying a second or third home. Because Vallarta's real estate market is one of the few markets in the country that's predominantly a dollar market. You can still make offers in pesos and purchase in pesos, but primarily everything is priced in dollars. So it's one of the few markets where Mexican nationals can invest their US dollars in their own country. The property value appreciates in dollars and they rent it out in dollars. So it's really a big, big win for them to invest in their own country and see their portfolio increase. Over half the owners in the building we're in now are Mexican nationals. And they've owned there for a long yeah. time. And now we're getting a lot more European buyers as well. A lot of the European buyers would tend to go, <clears throat> excuse me, to the east coast of, of Mexico, like Cancun. It's a lot closer. But we've been seeing a lot more uh, Europeans flying over here. And there, and there are some direct flights. I think there's some, in the high season, there's some direct flights from Vallarta to Amsterdam. 
Russians wow. bought our old condo. That's right. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. a, a young Russian couple. Um, so actually, that leads me. To, so what do you think of uh, this kind of local versus non-locals being there? Is there any kind of resentment? How do you feel? I've not ever experienced mm -hmm. that. Oh, um, no. No. We're, I mean, the people in our building, our old building and this building, I mean, it's just Vallarta. Vallarta is just such a friendly place. The people who live here, the people who work here, I mean, the people who visit here sometimes are the problem because they're not very nice. And we, it's one of the things we love the most about living here. And in our building, you know, often we'll be the only English speakers at the pool and it doesn't matter. Everybody's friendly. Everybody has a good time. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, just quickly. So in terms of pre-construction, since we're mm -hmm. still on this Valarte slide, um, how risky is it to purchase pre-construction and are those units duplexes? What do you mean duplexes like two stories? Two stories. Two, okay. two stories. Yeah. Well, there are always inherent risks, you know, whether you're buying resale or you're buying pre-construction, the, the key here is to do your due diligence, um, hire a real estate attorney and have a really good real estate agent looking out for your best interest. And also looking at the track record of the developer, you know, if they've built before, where have they built, have they finished the building um, on time, were there delays, the quality of construction. You know, it's not uncommon when, when buyers come down here and they're looking at a pre-construction and they want to see what else the developer has built. And if that builder has, you know, has other buildings in the area, they tend to go and look at the quality of construction of what this builder has done. And then you want to look at all the legal documents. And this doesn't 100% guarantee anything but you know, all you can do is your due diligence and get all the information you can. So you can decide if this, if you feel comfortable, you know, um, dipping your toes in pre-construction. You know, there are, there, you know, there are some buildings where I won't touch it. And I had a client of mine that was interested in buying this one particular building. And uh, I said, well, you know, I can refer some real estate attorneys, but uh, you know, if you're going to do it, I'm not, I'm not getting involved because that build, you know, that building has had its ups and downs over the years with switching hands with with developers. So, you know, it was, it was a building that was halted during the recession of 08. And they've tried to relaunch it numerous times with different people. So it's kind of got this, I don't know, little curse on it. <laughs> but until I see definite progress in that building, then, you know, I'll consider, you know, um, you know, supporting it uh, and, and sharing that information with my clients. But until such time, you know, I'm not really, you know, I'm not going there. So there are a lot of other great options in town that I would rather have my clients consider that I know that are being built by reputable developers. So the, so the units in Valarte though, they're all one floor. Uh, there are the only there. units that are two levels, like a loft style. Um, there are, a, they're just like, I think one, two, three, less than 10 units on the, on the ground level. And then the rest are just all single level homes, single level condos. Awesome. <laughs> Michelle wants you to spill the tea. That's hilarious. Um, trying to be diplomatic now. I know. Uh, so Todd wants to know if you have to pay electric if you rent. Yes, indeed, you do. Is yeah, that, yeah, but you only have do. to pay electric. Is that your only utility bill? Yes. Yes. We're metered separately. I just checked the, checked this out. However, because we're living on the beach, it's cooler, and because our son's not living with us, <laughs> um, who ran his air conditioning twenty four seven, but because of that, um, our our bill's gone down oh. like in half. Yeah. What so how much do you pay a month? What did we pay for? How many months? We paid for. Almost five months, we paid 5,600 pesos. $250 for five yeah. months. Yeah. For four my, months. Uh, with my electric bill is $75 I mean, a month right now in the summertime. And I run the AC yeah. when I'm home. That's, I mean, that's really amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you turn off the lights and turn off all the air conditioning is not central air. So it's all per room. So we turn it all off as we leave the rooms. We're very, yeah, we, we try to be, you know, uh, environmentally correct. And that's one of the reasons our bills are low. 
but um, it's sure not what it costs in the U.S. in terms of utilities. Yeah, but you can run. I know that some people do run a five six hundred dollar electricity bill, but that is because they're running everything twenty four seven. Sure, and, and and also you know Especially some some AC. people rent uh, they rent their place out like like a slot machine. I mean, it's constantly rented. They're generating great revenue. And the renters come down during, and even in the winters when the humidity is very low for them for a lot of people coming down it's still they feel like it's like super humid and it's not so the renters are you know the, all the electricity on the ac is turned on you know when they leave the condo so then that kind of you know racks up the bill but you know i kind of uh, learned the good habits of my mom where if you're not in the room turn off the lights you know so you know when i get home Right now it's, you know, it's like 88, 90 degrees and it's almost 80 to hundred percent humidity. So this is like from July, August, September, the beginning of October, I would say it's the most humid uh, time of the year. And when I get home from work, I turn on the AC and all the ACs here are, they're not like Craig said, they're not uh, central. There are a few places that are central, but really they're all mini splits. So they look like this rectangular device. It goes up at the top of the, the, the wall and then the compressor, the motor is outside. So each room is kind of like zoned in a, in a sense, has its own remote control. So I turn the AC on in my bedroom, I turn the AC on in the living room, and I and I have it on, you know, until I go to work the next day. So even that, you know, my, my bill is $75 um, a month, has been for July and August. That's great. Um, so we're going to get to some utility questions, but I just wanted you to just, um, talk a little bit about this condo in the romantic zone, because that's a very popular mm -hmm. area in PV for people to live. Um, what can you tell me about so this, unit? this unit is, um, one of the largest units in the building called loft 268. Uh, it's a, it's a development I represented. We started construction in 2016. Um, and we del started delivering units in 2018. So it took, it took around just under two years to finish the project. Um, there are 64 units, studios, one and two bedrooms. And this is one of the largest two bedrooms. It's a corner unit with a wraparound terrace. So we just sold this unit for 645,000. Um, everything you see there is included. The rooftop has this great um, like L-shaped uh, lap pool. There's a waterfall. There's an air conditioned bar with a pool table, there's a gym, uh, there's 24 seven um, personnel at the reception desk. There's a nice little water feature as well. And the property tax for this unit is only $220 a year. Wow, that's insane. Um, <laughs> so what about in terms of these units, uh, is the cable and Wi-Fi included? The cable, well, well, the. Cable or is that all? So separate? the, mm -hmm. so you can, there are internet companies um, and there's a phone company that provides internet that that's kind of like a standard service. So Telmex um, is the, uh, is a company that, that provides a telephone service and home internet. And it's really inexpensive. It's just, it's like $19 and 50 cents a month. It's 389 pesos. So for with that, you get unlimited calling um, in Vallarta unlimited calling to Canada and the States, and it includes internet for under $20 a month. So I, what yeah. is that true? Yeah. You know, when I, when I first, when I first started real estate here, that's remember Vonage. I don't know if anybody remembers Vonage. So you guys can talk yeah. about oh, yeah. like Vonage and, and, Vonage and Magic Jack. So you know, we used to yeah. use Vonage to call the States from my office because it would cost so much to use the cell phone or to use the landline in our office to call. And Vonage's signal was atrocious. It was terrible. I could barely hear the, my, my clients on the other line. But when um, AT&T entered the market in Mexico, I, would, I think it was around maybe five, six years ago, AT&T was offering unlimited calling to the States and Canada. So when they did that, Carlos Slim, Carlos Slim owns Telmex and Telcel, which is a cellular service, then they upped their game and matched what AT&T was doing. So, and also, you know, like the cell phone for my some Mexican cell phone, which I pay $25 uh, a month, I get to call unlimited in Mexico, unlimited to the States and Canada. And when I'm in the States or Canada, there are no roaming charges. So really it was the competition, AT&T entering, entering the marketplace that, that tell, tell, sell and tell Max changed their tune because it's a, it's, you know, 
that's that's kind of the great thing that we kind of got out of it you know this time around it's really affordable and you can have the equivalent of cable but we stream so we buy streaming services and i don't need to watch the news yeah <laughs> there's another internet provider uh, called total play which uh, i have in my place it's 25 dollars uh, a month it's fiber optics they came out and installed it in one day and i think it's like a hundred megabyte download speed which i don't ever need um but it, it's great so you don't have to have telmex in order to get internet there are other companies that just provide internet service direct and the other thing is frankly when you live here and you have these views you spend less time watching television you know i yeah, mean there's you, a lot very the outdoor life yeah. is just amazing it's out there. just gorgeous and so and the and the weather's so nice so um we don't watch television nearly like we did yeah. in the u.s we maybe watch an hour of television a day maybe yeah. Yeah. maybe so do any of you ever worry about flooding i mean pv did have that huge storm last year about so todd's asking about living on the ground floor during rainy season what are some i don't know if you have any insight into that well, I mean, you guys, it, it depends on building on bin, building to building and neighborhood to neighborhood. I mean, that's going to be different everywhere. It depends on, you know, the, the condition of the building, the age of the building. And is it on a steep hill or not? Um, is it right on the beach? Is it at the top of a mountain? I, there are a lot I of mean, variables that you have to throw in there to answer that question. Just like, just like anywhere else, like yeah. in New York, you know? But, right. And lower Manhattan is definitely flood zone. You, you, yeah. If that's of concern, definitely I would check into flood zones um, and which, you know, which areas are more vulnerable for sure. Cause you definitely do not want to flood in your apartment. Um, Bill's asking, so do you know what the HOA fee is on this unit in the romantic zone? On this condo? Daniel? The HOA dues is uh, around yeah. 300, it's 6,100 pesos. So that's just over $300 if you use a 20 uh peso exchange rate what's that 310 305 dollars something like that um so kimberly's asking about the reliability of internet in pv and is it included in the rent well some some landlords may rent the place out with all the utilities included but that you, you don't really see that for long-term renters if, if, you, if you're renting an airbnb let's say for a week or two they're not going to charge you for internet for gas and water you know, just a short-term renter so all that stuff they factored into their daily rate but if you're if you're renting long term usually you're responsible for your own utility bills uh, you know unless for example if the gas people... and water is included in the oh, yeah. hoa dues you don't have to worry about that but there are lots of people living here who are also working here and they rely on the internet completely um and it's working for a lot of people mm -hmm. And we, we, internet was very important. I do, I do visual art and the internet's really important to me. So when we moved into this condo, we hired a company that came in and installed the best internet we could get at that time. We've, we live in a concrete building. So, which is a good thing because it's sturdy but there are portions of the building where the sound, if you're on your cell phone, it cuts out. Um, I mean, that's just. But you can do something about most of, most of those kinds of problems. There are people here who you can hire to fix that. And we go outside. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's actually an issue in New York City. Like, I I don't get internet service in the back of my apartment, mm. you know, because the walls, because it's an older building yeah. and the walls are too thick. But that's, yeah. but that's very true. Same but I have too. not. Yeah, so I think it's really depends mm -hmm. on the building um, that you live in. But in terms of actual reliability, you do, you have um, fiber optics internet yes. now. Yes, yes. In TV, yeah. right? You yeah. do have that option, so oh, it yeah. is fast yeah. internet. And power, and the, power is an iffy thing here. Sometimes we lose power with some frequency, especially this during the warmer year. month. Especially this time of year when it's the rainy season. And I mean, last night we had the oh, most yes. spectacular. Wow, it was incredible. 
Oh my gosh. God, it, was it was, we just sat out on the terrazza and watched the storm for an hour. Uh, it was amazing. And, and, but we did not lose power last no. night. No, but then the, we did have one big loss of power where I thought everything had exploded. It actually affected half of the building, but it went down the middle. So the front half of it was, was there was no power and the back half of there was power. Who knows yeah. why? We had a major wow. um, uh, electrical storm last night. It was, actually, it woke me up around 2, 2 to 30 where I live. I don't know if it was pouring over there, Randy, if you guys woke up. But like around 2. It was earlier. Well, us. for me, like around 2, 2 30 in the morning, I mean, there was this big explosion outside my building. <laughs> and I thought there was an accident or something. And I, and I walked out to the terrace. It was pouring like crazy. And there were just like these uh, spider webs of, of lightning and then the thunder that followed. It was, it was really quite majestic. It was really cool. Yeah, I couldn't sleep for an hour because it was so loud, but it was cool. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, that's pretty magical. No, it is pretty. The, the storms are yeah. really yeah, humbling. Yeah, it's that's magical. Storm. That's why the summer here is great. The storms are fabulous. You know, it's hot, but but it's hot in Arizona and Texas, too. Um, I mean, it's hot in a lot of places. And you, we actually love the, the summer months here. You know, it's hot and humid and rainy sometimes. And it used to be quieter. But, it's, it's but the... I love this time of year here. Because it's so good for your skin and your complexion. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm 117 years old. <laughs> Thank you, Vallarta. <laughs> <laughs> um, so does this unit in the romantic zone include a parking space, Daniel? Um, so, so this, some of the units, well, there, there was a limited uh, number of parking spaces the first buyers could purchase in pre-construction. So this unit did buy a parking space and a storage locker. So that came with the unit. And when you sold this one at 600 K that was pre, that was, um, already pre exist. It was already yeah, existing. So the, it was not the people that uh, right? bought, have bought this unit. They're the third owners. Yeah. Okay. So you can't, so you can take, you cannot take a mortgage out on pre-construction, no. but you can, Okay. Um, and we do, we've talked a little bit about mortgages and past mm -hmm. talks that we've had, um, but you can in on existing. Yeah. Remember the, the bank has to put a lien on the property. So if the property doesn't exist, like in pre-construction, you're not getting the loan. Um, but for the, for resale properties already existing that have title, yes, you need to get a loan. A uh, question for Randy and Craig. So are your social security checks directed to directly deposit it into a bank in Mexico or how do you handle that? Directly deposit the bank in the U S the U S and we have U S expenses like everyone else, you know, we have to pay taxes and all of that. So what we do is we, uh, the bank we have will accept a U.S. check, uh, if you bank there. So we write a check from our U S bank to our Mexican bank and they deposit it. Wait, so say that again. So, so which bank? Well, we have in? a bank in the U.S. that we were at for years in Santa Fe. And now uh, we is have... Is it a, a national bank or a local bank? A local bank. Well, it, it's a regional bank. It's Yeah. Yeah. And now we have a bank here, a Mexican bank, Intercam. Um, and we are able to move money back and forth. And, uh, you know, you, you, you have to figure it out, but it's not that difficult. And the bankers are always willing to help especially at intercam at intercam is nice because they will accept a check from the u.s and they, they if, you, nearly, if, if you bank there not as a tourist right and they nearly always have english speakers in the banks but but legally your social security check needs to be deposited in a u.s bank they you cannot deposit it directly into a mexican I, bank i'm is not an correct? expert but I, I, believe I believe that, that is, true. is true because they will not wire the money to a foreign bank account yeah. So you, so you'll always have to have, um, that's specific to the U S I'm sure that's probably correct for other countries. And you legally, well. your legal address, for instance, we no longer own a home in the United States, but our legal address in the United States is the last address we had. So we are legal residents of Santa Fe, New Mexico. 
we vote from Santa Fe, we bank from Santa Fe, and our Social Security goes to Santa Fe. And we have a traveling mailbox. We have a virtual mailbox uh, that we get all of our U.S. mail through. It's, it's very inexpensive, very reliable, and it's, it's worked out well. What is that? So, so do they give you also an address? They give you an address mm -hmm. and that uh, it's complicated, but yes, they give you an address. So our, our mailbox is actually in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Right. That's where our mail goes, but we, we see everything on the computer and we either tell right. them they scan all your mail, they either open it or we don't want it opened or whatever. Yeah. And they shred it after a period of time and et cetera. Oh, that's very convenient, huh? Oh, it's um, great. It's about $350 a year and it's worth it. Well, something to consider down here is that the, the, <laughs> there's, there's no mail service. You don't get mail at your house. There's not a postman or a post lady bringing, bringing stuff to you. Um, it's just not happening here. So, you know, like where we live now, uh, we don't, I mean, somewhere in there is an address but it's very obscure. We just tell people the name of the building and our, our, our apartment number um, because there's no mail delivery. So that takes some getting used to, but that, that really made the traveling mailbox all the more critical. And, we ha and Amazon will deliver. I do actually have an address of the place we okay. live, but Amazon will deliver to it. Yeah. Yeah. But we have a, we have a, a, a door person, yeah. a person at the door. Oh, so you do technically have an address. And so if you need packages delivered, yes, you can get, but not through the mail. I have, I have to go to the post office and pick up something I ordered. Yeah. Risa, Risa, the, the, uh, unfortunately the Mexican postal service is not great. Like Randy and Craig said, you know, if you, if you send me a postcard, I might get it in two years. Um, but, but, but <laughs> you typically use, don't. And I won't just, do just come down here and hand, hand it to me in person. Um, but a lot of people like, no, they, for important documents, we DHL or FedEx, um, and, and, mm -hmm. you know, Amazon, Mexico, we order all the time they work great. Cause I know some people asked about that before. So there are a lot of online retail stores now that will, will ship, you know, to, to Mexico. So that's great. That wasn't the case before. So that's increasingly true. Um, so do you normally have natural gas or propane in the units? Propane. Uh -huh. Propane. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of these questions. Um, this is actually taken by Craig, this lovely sunset picture. Um, so Darren said, we added Google Nest mesh system to our place in PV. Despite the concrete walls, we were able to get signals in all rooms. That's yeah. awesome. I have, I, I, have, a, I, have no, I have repeaters in my condo and the signal integrity mm -hmm. has not dropped. It's fantastic. So my my modem is in my office, which is on one end of the condo, and my my main bedroom is on the other end. Um, so I have two repeaters, and the signal is just great throughout. Yeah, we have repeaters as well, yeah. and it works. That's awesome. Um, okay, so I'm going to get back to the questions. We're going to have a formal Q and A session, um, but I do want to, since it's already two o'clock, I want to get through some of these like costs of living day to day stuff that um, would be helpful for everybody. So I'm just going to kind of we'll do like a little bit of round robin. You okay. tell me how much <laughs> you pay. Bing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we talked about electricity. So electricity anywhere between $75 a month and up, depending on how, on your, yes, basically correct. your usage. Right. Um, and we talked about, uh, cell service, home phone. Um, let's talk about cars. So how much is gas uh, right now? And you guys pay per liter, right? 99. 22, so 23 pesos. Oh, Randy, I, I found it for less. Leader. Yeah, you Costco. Did? Maybe I read the sign. Costco. Costco. No, you, you said a Pemex. Pemex is around 20, almost 23 pesos, but the cheapest gas I found uh, yeah. is at Costco. It's uh, It comes out to roughly $3.88 a liter. It's 20.49 pesos. No, a gallon, gallon you mean. Me. Yeah, 20.49 yeah. pesos a liter. So it's roughly like $3.88 a gallon. 
That's that's the best I found. So it's comparable to here. Well, in LA, I was in LA in June, I believe it was June, and it was around eight dollars a gallon. Seven to eight dollars. Yeah, no, California. I think I think it's, it's gone down since yeah, then. Yeah, it's insane. A little bit. Um, and what about so we talked car registration, car, registration, huh, car insurance, like car. My car registration for this year was thirty six dollars, um, and my car insurance. I have a two thousand eighteen um, SUV, and it's I think it was like four hundred eighty five dollars for the year. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So you pay about the same, Randy and Craig. Yes, uh, it functions differently, and that's way too complicated to explain. Right. But it's <laughs> it's certainly not as expensive as it is in the U.S. And another thing that's really part of our, I mean, because of our age, or Craig's age, he's older. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> a lot. Um, the medical expenses here and just going to the pharmacy or the pharmacy, things are so much less expensive as are doctor visits and x-rays. We both, uh, we both have had knee surgery in the past year and getting an x-ray was about the x the x-ray was um about 900 pesos so about 45 dollars and you just walked yeah. in and got the x-ray mm -hmm. and took it to your doctor you know it's you if you go if you go to the hospital here if you have to go to the er um they they usually would just take you into the er um, there's not all this paperwork that you have to wade through first before any, any med you get any medical attention and the medical services here for us have been amazing. We love our yeah. doctors here. Yeah, I agree. They all speak English. Um, they're trained both here at the university in Guadalajara, which is one of the best medical universities in the world. And they trained in the U S and Europe and, um, and the price difference in dentistry mm -hmm. and going to the doctor here and, and the U.S. is really a huge, huge savings. And it was one of our biggest yeah. concerns. I mean, just just to tag on what Randy said about the cost of health care here, um, it's substantially less. Like my, my annual health insurance is $3,800. Um, I just went to see my doctor. I have a general doctor. I go for like a visit you know, once every six months. It's 40 bucks for the visit. Um, my mom has to take, my mom, my mother lives in Los Angeles. She has to take this acid reducer uh, pill, one per day. And with her insurance, my mom's, you know, 82, she still has to pay around 20, $25 for a 30 day prescription. That exact same the medicine here, I get it for like a dollar 75. <laughs> so you're looking at, I mean, it, you just, you just can't balance that out. Uh, dentistry. You know, teeth cleaning here, I know, roughly like $35 to $40. Uh, regular porcelain crown in Vallarta is around $350, and, and it goes up from there. I think in L.A., it's $800 or $1,000, $1,500 and up. Uh, I had dental work done here because I had implants put in, and the implant was $8,000 in the United wow. States, and I paid about $2,400 yeah. for it here. And this was when I was a tourist. Yeah. There's there's a whole um, there's tur tourism that's a medical tourism. Medical is tourism. Is our surgeon, our orthopedic surgeon, most of his business comes from the U.S. and Canada, yeah. but he's here. Yeah. Well, I bet. And he's great. I mean, they're just great. And there's and if you are. If you're 65 or is it 60, you're eligible for the uh, NFS yes. card. So, so Mexico has card. this really great program for people of 60 years and older, uh, for, na for Mexican nationals and for temporary or permanent residents. Um, so INAPOM is the National Institute of, of Older Adults. So you have to be at least 60 years old to, to apply to get this. And when you do, you know, you're offered a whole bunch of different discounts and each state offers uh, different discounts for different services. For example, in Jalisco for the property tax, if you have this in a PAM, in a, in a PAM card, 
you get a 50% discount. So remember, pro property tax here is almost free <laughs> already. Uh, so you get a 50% oh, half half of, yeah, you get half off for free. Um, your water bill, you get a 50% discount. Uh, transportation, so when you're taking you know, the, those Greyhounds back and forth from Guadalajara, you also get a 50% discount over there. Walmart, Sam's Clubs, and a few other big retail stores offer discounts from 5%, 10%. Um, Aero Mexico, if you go to the airport to buy your uh, airline ticket with Aero Mexico, you get a 15% discount, but you have to do it in person at the airport. Interjet is another um, airline, but Interjet, you have to be 65 years, um, and they offer 20% discount. So, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but that's a really nice little program that they have for seniors here in Mexico. And I'll tell your story. Which one? We've been trying to get this, and we've been trying to get this card forever. And Randy was going down once oh, a month. Oh, grief! Yeah. And they kept saying they didn't have any cards. They didn't have any cards. They were out of them. So we still don't have that. We still don't have it. You yeah. can get it. I mean, I'm sure if we yeah. tried. If we tried get again, it. we went. We were on a mission. I think you have to be more charming. <laughs> Well, Maybe when, they don't believe that you're 60, over 60. Well, when, Mex when, when Mexicans don't want to say something to you, they very politely say, no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have to be a, a retina specialist in Guadalajara uh, every couple of months. And I take a bus there. Uh, it's a luxury bus. It's two stories. And it's got internet and very big reclining leather seats, big windows looking out, um, restrooms on the bus. Um, how much? It's really inexpensive. It's it's you're paying about forty five dollars each way, and it's a five hour bus ride. But that's cheap. That's great. And Mexicans travel by bus. That's their main transport for, for long for the long haul. Yeah. Yeah, for long haul. Yeah. And so that's so there are um, hospitals uh, that cater the private hospitals that cater to yeah. expats um, in PV in Puerto Vallarta. I actually toured one of them. Um, but if you're going from like bigger surgeries or more, uh, then people tend to go to Guadalajara. Is that correct? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No, we, we, all our surgeries have been done here, um, at CMQ hospital. Um, the, I mean, you can't believe how big the rooms are that you get and everything's the newest equipment. It's super clean. Uh, most of the medical staff is young and very knowledgeable about all the latest um, uh, cures and equipment and everything else. It's very impressive, really. The whole the whole medical care system here is very impressive. But there's... unless you're unless you're poor and broke and have to live on the like a county hospital in L.A. or something would be, you know, that's never great. And there's different levels. I, when I, I had to have surgery in in Guadalajara because I had a accident in that area and my a mexican friend of mine met me at the hospital and he said this hospital is too expensive we need to go to a cheaper hospital and the doctor said well, if you move him it's a bad thing right now but i had my my medical insurance covered any accident a hundred percent so i had what was uh, i found out was about a ten thousand dollar surgery for free Okay, so we're officially in our Q&A session now. Um, okay, so let me just ask uh, Daniel. Um, I'm not sure, Lucia, which, which condo you're talking about, but let's say it's the romantic zone condo, long-term rental for a year for something that's two bedroom. Two bedroom, two bath in the, in, in the romantic zone. I, I really don't have that number. Yeah, there, there are so, so many different buildings. And, you know, um, I, my primary focus is real estate sales. I've, I teeter with a little bit of rentals, but in the loft 268, I mean, there are, there are smaller, they're different size two bedroom units. This happens to be the largest uh, what they rent for. I, on a monthly basis, I really don't know. I've seen some rates you can go to like Airbnb, 
Um, and I think there, there are a whole bunch of loft listings in there, and you can check out what their monthly rentals are like. You're probably also VRBO is another one. Yeah, and, uh -huh. that's who I always choose. I mean, there's lots of out there, and it changes all the time. And we found our rental on Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, which I still can't believe. I know. It's amazing. Um, so if someone's interested in single family homes with pools, with private pools, which neighborhoods would you recommend? For house, um, well, depending on how much you're thinking of spending. I mean, Amapas and Conchas Chinas, you know, they're going for 900,000 and up. Um, I just sold a house last year in the neighborhood called Aralias, which is uh, a few blocks away from Costco. Costco is in the neighborhood of Fluvial, where Valarte is located. And that house, I think I sold, she bought it for like around $250,000. It didn't have a pool, but there are a couple of houses there with a pool that, that's under three hundred. dollars Also, look, um, look in, well, Fluvial, Versailles. You, over there, you'll find homes between two hundred dollars something and up to around four dollars or $500,000. you are not going to find that in a mop. And then I think Christina. people are really... I think people are really starting to go outwards to northward, right? So Nueva Vallarta or Bucerías or Saigon. Yeah, I mean, Banderas Bay is, 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 a, is a huge bay. So Vallarta, if you look at Banderas Bay, it's kind of shaped, shaped like a crescent moon. And Vallarta is like smack in the middle, all right? And about a 15-minute drive north would be the airport. And then north of that, then you're hitting Bucerías. So you're, you're, now you're in the state of Nayarit. So you have Bucerías, La Cruz. Uh, all over there, there are a lot of new buildings that are going up and also gated communities that are being built. Um, Fluvial and Versailles, which is from the Romantic Zone, it's probably around like a 10 minute drive to get there. So it's really, really close. There are a lot of new buildings going up over there and a lot of single family homes as well. There's still a lot of land in Fluvial. So you're going to see that area being built out over the course of the next probably 10, 15 years. And great restaurants. A lot of wonderful stores. restaurants there now. Yeah. It's again. It's kind of. It's kind of like the new romantic zone. I mean, I, we're over. We're over in in that area almost every day, because that's where we grocery shop. That's where our optometrist is. That's where the dentist is. That's where you know. It's really the up and coming uh, area. But you're not on the beach. But it. It's, you're not on the beach. But it's yeah. charming. I really like that area too. Um, so Michelle's asking about pension checks. I'm not sure what the question is. Maybe if, I guess, if do you, do either of you have pensions? Is she offering to send me one? <laughs> I mean, I think that you need to do that. I mean, I have no idea, but my assumption is you would need to do that banking in the United States the same way it's you a, would. Because it's government probably, or, or even if it's not, you still have a bank in the United States. Right. I think so too. Um, Martha's asking if your bank is Bank of the West. Say that again. No, that. our bank, our bank is is uh, New Mexico Bank and Trust, which is part of a Dubuque National Bank. It's it's a chain of banks from that includes Colorado, goes north, and then goes into Arizona and New Mexico. But it's that's our bank in the U.S but it's a regional bank it's it was rated like number one regional bank in the united states a couple of years ago nice and what's the name of your postal service traveling traveling mailbox traveling mailbox they're actually located in north carolina but then because of where you live if you want to maintain your residency and since we're maintaining a residency in new mexico we have a New Mexico address. Don't ask me why and how it works, but it does. But you can certainly Google traveling mailbox and see what the service is. So how do you recommend the best way to get some personal things moved to Mexico? Uh, hey. Clothes, kitchen stuff, well, personal items. And well, of course it depends on how much mm -hmm. um, we ended up I mean, we were moving our life, you know, um, for not just a few months, we were really moving. So we ended up hiring a moving company, an international moving company, 
um, actually it was based in the U.S. and they had uh, licenses to, to come into Mexico. Um, and that's, that's how we did it. It's not inexpensive, um, but it sure makes you think about not moving every little thing you thought you had to have. If we had to do it again, I would have moved much less furniture mm -hmm. and bought furniture here. So much cheaper. It's so much cheaper. And beautiful. And beautiful and fun. Like the a big shopping, shopping spree. Yeah, the, the shopping here is Because so we spent oh, a lot of money. A lot of money moving furniture. furniture that actually we don't have very much of anymore. No, we don't. We, we've sold it since we've been here. Yeah. And, and Risa, when you're, if, if you, when you're a temporary or permanent resident and you want to bring your personal belongings into Mexico, um, and I don't know if this has changed, but I believe it's still, it's still the case. You can make one trip with all your personal belongings. There are certain paperwork that has to be filled out. Okay. Um, they say, you know, if, if you bring anything new, that's in a box, let's say you're bringing a new printer, a new computer, they're probably going to ch charge you some type of duties on, on top of that. So you know, it's suggested you take things out of the original packaging. Um, but you're allowed to make one trip down here with all your personal belongings. And like Randy said, there are professional movers without, without paying, paying tax. That is correct. Um, yeah. I think it's like one container or something like that. But it, there's a bit of paperwork involved, so you you know, it's kind of smart to hire a professional mover. That's if you if you do want to move anything and everything under the sun from your home in the states or Canada down here, you might want to consider hiring a professional mover to help you with the packaging and all the paperwork. Because if the paperwork isn't right, it could get stuck at customs at the border, and you don't want that to happen. I mean, it, it could, it, and, and, and that's and what we so did. It, it becomes really difficult to kind of get that corrected. Um, so I would say just look for a professional movie that, that does move across from the States kind of into Mexico. I think there's one called, a client of mine just used a company called, I think it was called Rainier Overseas. And there's another one some clients have used called, I think, Storm White Movers, something like that. So there are, there are a few out there. But I, 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 Taniel's, every step of the way, Taniel has recommended that we use uh, professionals, whether it's our immigration lawyer or the moving company, or uh, it's such good advice because it's, it's a different world. It's a different government that you're dealing with. And um, to have people who know what they're doing and you're not going to pay a fortune for that kind of that kind of advice and, and work down here. Our immigration lawyer is very reasonable for the amount of work she does. And she's done a lot for us. And last time I was at immigration there, you have to, every time you move, you have to register where you've moved yes. to. Um, and last time I was there, there was a man who'd moved three times and the, since his last, he got his last card and that poor guy, was lost and being buried and he did not have an immigration attorney with him and it was a mess i felt so sorry for him yeah and sometimes you're making multiple so, trips back and forth because you you know sometimes you go up to the teller you know and at the immigration i'll say okay i need this this and this so you leave you come back and she says well i also need this and you say well you didn't say that last time and the response is, <laughs> well, you need it. So you go back, you yeah. come back, and then it's something else. So it, that's not uncommon. Sometimes they don't give you like this long list of everything you need. You bring it in and you're done. So, and that can get really frustrating, especially if you don't have the time, there's a language barrier, um, and you, you know, you're just kind of exhausted. And, and so consider, you know, hiring a, a, a professional who does this sort of thing 24 seven um, but if you feel confident you want to do it on your own, you absolutely can. But there are those hurdles that you come across from time to time when you try to do it on your own in a foreign country. So I do know that people do bring, you know, basically five suitcases, six suitcases, you know, if you don't have a lot of things, um, in which case you just pay whatever you need to pay the airline um, for that. If it, if it seems like um, you don't have a ton of stuff. Um, so Mark, are we going to be doing a separate we webinar on living and working PV? It's very possible actually. So thank you for the suggestion. 
Um, so Darren, oh, wow, there's a lot of questions here. Okay. Cost of health care for permanent residents with pre-existing conditions. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to depend um, a lot in terms of your age and stuff. So I would actually recommend, Darren, that you come in to the webinar, the free webinar, where we're actually do a little bit, not a little bit, actually a much deeper dive into health insurance, what you can get for your health care um, in Mexico and the like. I think that'll be a much easier way because it's it, the, co the costs of health insurance ranges um, so much. But but pre-existing conditions is a thing down here or down in Mexico, right? It is. Um, can you get an MRI in PV? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've had an MRI in the PV. Um, did you keep your Medicare insurance? Yes. Yes. We did not keep our supplemental because the cost of the supplemental insurance was just about exactly what our expat insurance was. So we did not buy supplemental insurance to our Medicare, but we have Medicare. We, we, we have that. I mean, it's kind of just, you know, we feel like if something major happened and we needed to be in the U.S., it's there. But so far, we've, we've not used it in five years. We've not used it. There's a, there's a question mark around the, the supplemental insurance we might invest in. I have an exclusion for anything cardiac. So I might at some point decide to get supplemental and a evacuation insurance. There's lots of, I mean, but Pam Thompson can talk to you about this. It, it, this is a really complicated thing. Complicated thing, yeah. Um, so okay. tune in to that. So someone has to, to drop the link uh, in, so that's why I pushed to, to this slide, just so people have it. Can you drink the water? I never. <laughs> you can. I wouldn't I recommend never drink, it. I never drank um, the water in LA. If you do, get a charcoal UV filter and you'll be good to go. We have we have filters put in our homes mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, so we have filtered water in the kitchen. Um, and that's what we cook with. And that's what we drink. Um, we, you know, we don't get sick very much here, but we've lived here a long time now. And I, our bodies are probably somewhat accustomed to it. But you, everyone wants to serve you bottled water anyway. We try to be aware of that just because of the, the climate issue and the plastics and all of that stuff. But um, in most restaurants, if, unless you're going to a taco stand on the street, you're probably okay. But if they don't have a place with running hot water to wash dishes or to do any of that, then you have to be really careful. About and if you that. do go to taco stands, go to the ones where you see a lot of Mexican nationals eating. If there's nobody around that taco yeah. stand, it's probably not a good idea. Don't go to there. <laughs> if there's a well, long line, it's and, great. And the, I also want to say my Mexican friends get sick when they go to the United States. You know, when I, yes. when I first moved to Vallarta <laughs> for the first six months, um, I was getting sick a lot. I had one infection after the next. It was just my body. I mean, when I travel, when I go to Europe or anywhere else in the world, usually the second week I'm there, I get some type of a head cold. My body is just kind of really sensitive that way, but not for everyone. So the first six months, I was like, I would, I would get sick from, from the food and my stomach was upset because a lot of you know, restaurants here, you have jalapeno, salt, and lime. And I wasn't used to having that on the table all the time. <laughs> And funny enough, a friend of mine from Guadalajara had moved to L.A. the same time I moved from L.A. to Puerto Vallarta. And for the first six months of him living in L.A., he was getting sick all the time, you know. Yeah, and then after yeah. that, I mean, I was fine and he was fine. Uh, but that's not the case for everyone. Uh, but me, you know, just I mean, I, I, you know, I look so delicate and dainty. You know, my system just kind of adjusts, <laughs> you know, and during the short term. And then I'm good to go. But... Puerto Vallarta has the highest rated water in Mexico. So Vallarta's, um, yeah. however, the pipes coming into your building, who knows? Yeah. That's a different so story. Safe and, provides and, the water here for Vallarta. Uh, it's a different, it's a different company for Nuevo. 
and their water has been certified safe to drink as long as I've been coming here. But again, you don't know what kind of pipes it's going through by the time it comes out out of your faucet. So always, if you're going to drink tap water, you know, have some type of filtration system. I have a UV uh, charcoal system. I bought it at this appliance store here called Tio Sam, like Uncle Sam. And they have a, a small and a medium and a, and a large uh, UV charcoal system. And the small one, uh, it's just for like the refrigerator and like your, your, your tap water in the, in the kitchen. The medium, you could add, you know, uh, more to it. And then if you get the large one, you could add your, your showers and, and everything else, right? The, the, the faucets and the bathrooms. So I just have the little one that's connected to, to my refrigerator and my refrigerator has a filtration system in there already. So the water that I drink is super clean. And I just changed that uh, charcoal UV filter once a year and each cartridge, they're like these long tubes, it's like $15 each. So that's nothing. That's great. Okay, so we are running out of time. So I definitely want to go through all these questions. Um, so maybe, okay, so we're talking about pet friendly. So Martha has been looking at places, learned, um, what should we be asking to ensure we can walk them on the property? Most said we could not. Or renting. Tanya, you have two dogs. She, she wants to rent. I guess so. Who answered, Martha? They started looking at places in PV, yeah. And they're right. looking for pet so friendly places. condominium buildings, uh, if you're in, okay, if the condo building is pet friendly, that's one thing. That means the owners can have a pet. And usually in the rules and regulations, there are guidelines and restrictions in terms of how many, what kinds of pets, how many, and if there's, if there's any weight restriction. It's not uncommon for renters not being allowed to bring a pet in condominium buildings. So it's really, you have to check um, with the owner of that condo unit to see if they will allow pets. So, you know, like Loft 268, the, one of the properties you just showed in, in Romantic Zone, it's a pet friendly building. It doesn't mean that that particular owner wants your pet you know, staying, you know, in the unit. Uh, for houses, you, you, you tend to not have that problem as much, uh, but always just let the owner know, I've got, you know, I have two little chihuahuas. So just let them know, you know, you've got pets, the breed, the weight, and then they'll let you know, you know, but, but houses, there's a greater chance of you renting a house that will allow pets versus finding a condo uh, for, for guests, for renters that will allow pets. Like where we used to live in Vallarta Med, in Upper Conchas Chinas, it wasn't a lot of the owners that were renting their place out. They they allowed the renters to to have pets, but that's not always the case. But you had to walk them off the yeah. property. Yeah, and then like some buildings, they do have a little pet area. Like Valarte, we're building a pet area. Uh, Paramount Bay, they have a little pet area there for owners um, to to walk their dogs. So not every building has a little pet pet area. Uh, although like like Craig said, you know, you just have to walk your dog out on the sidewalk with a bag. But I would say PV is pretty pet friendly in general. Yeah, there are a lot of like a lot of outdoor restaurants and cafes allow for pets. Uh, usually, indoor restaurants do not. Uh, but but it's it's very common for you to be able to take your dog to like a beach restaurant or like on Basilia Badia, which is like Restaurant Row, and they have a lot of outdoor seating there. So yeah, it's usually not a problem. But always have your dog on a leash, please. Because there are stray pets and you know dogs can go berserk as as well behaved as they might be they see something they smell something and they go crazy but always have them on the leash okay next question any gated communities for part-timers an approximate cost per square foot i don't see a lot of gated communities well there PA. are gated communities but i mean you're talking about renting or buying because you really i really can't answer that question yeah, i'm not sure you know but Karen, you can add to that. We're going to go to the next one. Um, is it possible to still get great amenities on a $1,700 social security budget? Not near the beach. No. I'm sorry. So you want to rent for $1,700 no. and what do you, what do you, what's your definition of, of and get great amenities, but does not need to be near the beach. I don't know. Uh, well, there are a lot of, for the, anything yeah, is yeah. Possible, I mean, look, there's, there's something for everyone. Um, again, Fluvial and, and Versailles are some great areas to consider, but there's, uh, there's also Bucerias. So there are, there are a lot of great areas. Sure. Like, like, like for example, romantic, um, zone, you know, you know, $1,700 for maybe a studio 
in an older building might be a possibility, but for new built or one or two bedroom, like at loft, you're not going to find $1,700 for a month. Um, so Tanya, can you put in the chat, the name of the moving company? I typed Karen? that at, like, if you just scroll um, up a little bit, yeah, there's storm oh, white right. movers and Rainier overseas movers. Just so you know, guys, I have not used these companies. These are companies clients of mine have used and recommended. Um, I suggest, you know, you reach out to them to see if they still service, you know, whichever part of Mexico, whether it's Vallarta or somewhere else, um, and get some, get, get some referrals too, to see, you know, how they do with the packaging and the shipping and, and uh, the time it took to get your belongings down here. And there's, when we shipped our stuff set in a storage unit, un, un, un air conditioned storage unit in Southern Texas for a month before it crossed the border. Now we were lucky, but we might not have been. It, it, you can Google international movers and you'll get lots of choices and the interview or movers to Mexico, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So that's always tricky. It's tricky for sure. And, um, so if you're diff, if you're interested in only coming down to going down to PV, um, during the winter months, um, Airbnb is an option. VRBO is an option. Do you guys have other options that you recommend for, you know, a three month rental? Well, there are other, there are other, um, local websites if you just um google puerto verta vacation rentals uh there are some companies that will pop up i just want to point something out with uh vrbo and airbnb and risa this happened when you were down here when we were filming for dream retirement in mexico so my broker carl has a penthouse at molino de agua and when we were filming you know somebody asked for the link you know i think it was vrbo if i recall or maybe it was airbnb now i can't remember so when we we're filming, I looked up his listing on whichever one it was, and it was a d different photograph of the the person who owned the property that had Molina Dago penthouse, uh, was penthouse nine. Well, it turns out someone had, somebody had, no, not had cloned, someone had cloned Carl's listing oh. and, and put it as his own. So there are scams everywhere, even on these reputable websites. So be really careful when you're booking, you know, whether it's VRBO, Airbnb, Craigslist, or anywhere else, that the person you're talking to has the legal authority, has the right to perform whatever service they're, they're providing, which is renting out the place, right? So it gets really tricky. And by the way, when I went to Craigslist, I ended up with a, a rental agency. So because the the owner wanted to vet us and rightly so yeah um okay so karen's asking do you, can you give uh an approximate price of how much it would cost house cleaner per hour a driver a chef and a gardener house cleaner oh oh my gosh well we love our maid more than anything more than me she's fab the maid nydia oh nydia is the best we have Nydia twice a week. She cleans our whole place. It is spotless. I've never had anyone clean better. She refolds all the clothes in every drawer. She rehangs everything in the closet. <laughs> she does her laundry. She does our laundry and we pay her about $25 every time she's there. Yeah. I pay mine uh, 21, $22. She comes once a week. She's usually there at 8 a.m. My place is a thousand square feet, two bedroom, two bath. Uh, she's there at eight o'clock in the morning and she's usually done by 1 p.m. 1, 1 1.30. Yeah, about three hours, yeah. So I don't know about hiring a drive, full-time driver. Um, um, or a chef or a gardener. Well, gardener, well, you guys live in condos, so that's a different and a, story. And a chef, can, it, that can wildly vary here. Um. Okay, I think, and then Karen was just asking about uh, what you think of the real estate market. Where's what's what's happening in your crystal ball? Where's, where's that crystal ball? <laughs> 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 well, you know, right now things are are good. Things have been good for the last few years, um, and I hate to say COVID's been good for business, but I think as you know, real estate in Canada and the states, you know, real, the market has gone up considerably. Vallarta's real estate market is in a sense very different from the rest of the country. I mean, I don't want to say we're in our own little bubble, 
but we kind of are. There are other parts of the country where the real estate is not doing as, as well. Things are slow. Uh, can things take a nosedive tomorrow? Absolutely. Uh, will it? We don't know. So, I mean, every, you know, real estate is, is cyclical. I think at some point we're going to start seeing a shift. When's that going to happen? I really can't tell you. But as of right now, we're very, very low on inventory. And how low, for example, I was looking for a two-bedroom condo in all of Conchas Chinas the other day for a client. And I only found one place on the beach for over $800,000. So, and I looked for a one bedroom. There was only one listing in the MLS. So that's kind of an indication of where we're at now. It doesn't mean that's where we're going to be in about in a week or so, but things are good right now. And people are, you know, they're cashing out of the States and Canada and moving somewhere else in the world. And, you know, Mexico being where, 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 where it's at, we're at an advantage here and, you know, if you're whether you're living living on social security, you're you're a, a no, digital nomad. You're going to be working remotely. You know, people are realizing, and they're not afraid to pack up their bags and leave anymore. That's the great thing. There's so much great information online now versus 15 years ago when when I, mean, I moved here. You know, in October 2003. I mean, there there wasn't that, there weren't that many YouTube videos on people moving to Mexico or or webinars or courses or or even trying to find uh, expats that had moved abroad. And it was very difficult to, to get in touch with these people. But now people are getting in touch. They're doing their own research at their fingertips and they're not afraid to move. Um, when I started real estate, the majority of my clients relocating to Vallarta were baby boomers. That's not the case. We have a lot of people in their 30s and their 40s, uh, young families. You know, I, I just filmed House Hunters with uh, four young couples, um, you know, having from two to five kids. They just packed it up and they moved down to Vallarta. One moved to Sayulita. So it's great. I mean, they're, they're, they're able to do this and, and most of them are working remotely. I think some of them at some point they've talked about, you know, opening up a business here or working for a company here. Um, but that's one of the beautiful things right now is that people are courageous enough to, to kind of take their life in their own hands and make a decision for themselves and their family moving forward. So things are good right now. So to answer your question, Karen. And, and there's, um, I mean, for us, it was a quality of life move. It was a quality of life decision. <clears throat> we were, we both had very good jobs in the U S we had a beautiful home. Um, we, we have great friends there, but our life here is much simpler. It is, there's a word in Spanish, it's tranquillo, it's tranquil. There's a tranquility to living here and a simplicity that has made a huge difference for us and, and, and certainly our health um, and our attitude and just our daily life is so, so much more pleasant. Um, and, and it's different for everybody, you know, but there are, are the people here are wonderful. They are friendly and sweet. Their, their lives are driven by, by their faith and, and family. They're so family oriented. When you see a big family of Mexicans going to the beach and they're, they're like lined up like possums and everybody's carrying a bunch of stuff, there's no cell phones. No. They're, they're talking to their grandparents, they're carrying babies, they're, it's just a different world and that's what we appreciate here at Great Deal.